The 1943 film Phantom of the Opera stands as a classic in cinematic history, weaving a tale of mystery, music, and the haunting allure of the Paris Opera House. Have you ever found yourself drawn into its mesmerizing narrative? For many, encountering this film sparks a memorable journey into the depths of suspense and music that lingers long after the final scene. As the curtains rise, immerse yourself in the captivating tale of the Phantom, a masked figure haunting the grandeur of the Opera House, intertwined with the enchanting talents of Christine, the rising star of the stage. The film not only mesmerizes with its haunting melodies and opulent sets, but also holds a unique place in cinema for its captivating storytelling and the eerie charisma of the Phantom himself. Do you recall your first encounter with this classic movie? What memory do you hold dear, perhaps a shared viewing with loved ones or a personal moment of resonance with the storyline? Your stories and cherished memories enrich the enduring legacy of this cinematic masterpiece, inviting a shared appreciation for its artistry and allure. Share your experiences and memories in the comments below. We'd love to hear your unique connections to this timeless tale. In the 1943 rendition of Phantom of the Opera, an intriguing incident unfolded behind the scenes. Susanna Foster, one of the actors, shared an interesting bond with Jack Pierce, despite his intimidating reputation. Pierce, known for his makeup skills, took a kind interest in coaching Foster on applying makeup that best suited her features. He cared enough to reprimand her playfully whenever she didn't follow his advice. Foster recalled Pierce pretending to be upset, emphasizing the importance of sticking to his suggestions. This unexpected camaraderie between an actor and a makeup artist added a unique layer to the production. Additionally, during a pivotal scene involving the hero's escape from the Phantom's crumbling hideout, Foster stood alone. While filming the dangerous sequence, the two male leads, Nelson Eddy and Claude Rains, deemed their presence unnecessary due to the risks involved and had stunt doubles take their places. Foster's solo appearance in this critical scene underscores the varying roles and considerations of actors during filming. These backstage anecdotes shed light on the dynamics among the cast and crew, revealing unexpected connections and decisions shaping the movie behind the curtains. Arthur Lubin stepped in as director, taking over from Henry Koster. This change marked a significant shift in the movie's direction. Meanwhile, Nelson Eddy's vocals underwent a transformation, recorded differently than before by Universal Sound Technicians. Initially disconcerted by the new sound, Eddie didn't recognize his own voice until the team convinced him of its improved quality. This alteration in direction and sound production became pivotal moments in shaping the final version of the film. These shifts behind the scenes shed light on the intricate process of crafting this cinematic piece, influencing its ultimate release. Universal Studios Stage 28, a historical site from the 1925 film, was revisited for the 1943 Technicolor version, featuring stars like Nelson Eddy and Claude Rains. Interestingly, this iconic location wasn't just a backdrop for this rendition. It served as the foundation for later films like Alfred Hitchcock's Torn Curtain and the musical Thoroughly Modern Millie. Its enduring presence in cinematic history remains evident, even in TV series like Murder, she wrote. Decades after its release, critic Tony Raines succinctly summarized the film as too much opera, not enough phantom, a viewpoint echoed by many. This concise statement encapsulates a prevailing sentiment about the movie's balance between its operatic elements and the phantom's essence, sparking ongoing discussions among enthusiasts. Intriguingly, behind the scenes, there was a notable decision involving Nelson Eddy's appearance. Initially, the script required his hair to be dyed black for his role as the operatic baritone Anatole, reminiscent of a previous silent version. However, Eddy, of Dutch descent with characteristic blonde hair, only agreed when Jack P. Pierce, the renowned universal makeup master, developed a washable tint. This compromise allowed Eddy to maintain his natural look while meeting the script's demands. These behind-the-scenes snippets offer a glimpse into the film's production intricacies, from iconic filming locations to debates about the movie's thematic balance, and even the negotiations shaping the actor's appearances. They underline the depth behind the making of this cinematic piece, showcasing its enduring influence across various fronts in the entertainment industry. The 1943 film adaptation of Phantom of the Opera nearly took a different direction. Initially slated as a vehicle for comedy duo Abbott and Costello, it also considered Lon Chaney Jr. and John Hall for key roles. However, Claude Rains cast as the Phantom stipulated minimal disfiguration, a condition successfully met by makeup artist Jack P. Pierce. 
Interestingly, co-star Nelson Eddy, renowned for his singing, showcased another talent by crafting a bronze sculpture of his co-star Susanna Foster. This intriguing mix of casting considerations and the artistic endeavors behind the scenes shaped the unique rendition of this iconic tale, offering a glimpse into the film's alternative paths and the collaborative efforts of its cast and crew. Susanna Foster, the 19-year-old soprano in the 1943 rendition, had an intriguing offer from Nelson Eddy for a concert tour, but she declined due to her age. Meanwhile, Charles Lafton's potential casting as the lead was scrapped in an early plan for a black and white production. These alternative paths hint at what might have been for the iconic film. Another key set from the silent era, Stage 28, used in both the 1925 and 1943 versions, met an unfortunate end when it was demolished in 2015 for new attractions, along with the Opera House set. The surviving remnants of these historical sets are now lost, marking the passing of an era in cinematic history. Of the operas showcased in the 1943 rendition, only one, Marta by Friedrich von Flato, stands as an authentic opera. The rest were adaptations, blending pieces from renowned composers like F. Ardrich Chopin and Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. The reason behind these adaptations was Nelson Eddy's vocal range. Being a baritone, finding romantic duets with a soprano was challenging due to opera conventions. The film had its share of casting considerations too. Initially eyed for Deanna Durbin, the role of Christine Dubois saw various potential actors, including plans with the Three Stooges. Universal Studios grappled with multiple attempts at bringing this tale to life, facing obstacles from financial woes to changing casts and even scrapped projects due to script refusals. The journey to create this rendition involved a series of twists and turns, altering its course until it finally found its way onto the screen. As the curtains draw to a close, take a moment to immerse yourself in the enigmatic allure of a timeless classic a cinematic marvel that echoes through the corridors of history. Delve into the allure of a masked enigma, the resounding melodies that seem to transcend eras, and the haunting tale that captivates hearts generation after generation. Reflect on the Phantom's haunting presence, the orchestration of love and tragedy, and how this masterpiece of cinematic artistry etches itself upon the tapestry of our memories. Whether it's the haunting melodies of the score, the magnetic allure of the Phantom's mysterious persona, or the mesmerizing spectacle of the Grand Opera House, there's a myriad of facets to explore within this captivating narrative. Your journey into the world of Phantom of the Opera may have sparked moments of awe, suspense, or perhaps a deep connection with the character's emotions that linger within you still. Share your impressions, your musings, or the scenes that continue to resonate within your heart. Your thoughts weave into the intricate fabric of its legacy, enriching its allure for those who follow this enduring tale. Thank you for sharing this cinematic journey for allowing the Phantom's haunting melodies to resonate within your soul. Your unique perspective adds depth and richness to the tapestry of experiences woven by this captivating masterpiece. Until we meet again in the halls of nostalgia, treasure those cherished moments that Phantom of the Opera has bestowed upon us all.